Hello, and welcome to episode 7 of Sarastro's Marvel Crisis Protocol painting series. In this video I'll be sharing my approach to painting Thor from Atomic Mass Games Marvel Crisis Protocol. The Thor miniature is a truly wonderful sculpt and a real pleasure to paint. You can see that I've based my colour choices on the idea of cold light radiating from the hammer, Mjolnir, as Thor summons the power of lightning from above. I've also enjoyed playing around with the various textures on the figure, such as the metallic details and leather, and I've chosen to give him some scale-like armour for the legs. Let's take a look at a quick overview of how I'll be painting Thor. As usual I've chosen to prime the figure in black, followed with some grey and white Xenothor highlights supplied from above, as detailed in episode 1. Next we'll provide the base colours where I'll be using mostly warm tones to better contrast with the cold light coming from the hammer. I'm then going to paint Mjolnir, using some quite bright turquoise tones and some white, and we'll be playing around with the textures along with a little freehand to create a nice sense of energy. Using the hammer as a frame of reference I'll then be highlighting the rest of the figure, decreasing the level of cold blue light the further down we go. Along the way I'll be having some fun rendering the different materials, including some non-metallic metal effects. Please note that you'll find a precise list of chapter links in the video description below for the various sections of the model. Let's begin with the base colours. I'm going to begin by painting the skin using a roughly equal mix of Bugman's Glow and Scale Colours Orange Leather, which I've added to increase the contrast of colour temperature against the bluish highlights I'll be adding later. I'm also darkening things slightly and toning down the saturation with just a little black. Here I'm adding some additional black to throw some deeper shadow over the eye area. I'm now going to paint the eyes using Vallejo's blue green mixed with some white. And if things go wrong we can trim the eyes back using the surrounding skin tone. I've now chosen to increase the amount of white and place a small hit in the centre of each eye, once again tidying up as I go. For the tunic and boots I'm using scale colours Eclipse Grey. I've chosen this because it has quite a warm tone, once again maximising the contrast with the colder light we'll be applying from above in a while. It's also pretty opaque, which makes it ideal for use as a base tone. A second layer may be needed for anywhere that looks a little patchy. To break the figure up a bit I've chosen to paint the legs in a lighter tone using scale colours graphite, which is once again quite a warm shade of grey. I'll be turning this into scale like armour in a while. Here I'm just using some pure black to paint the shadowed areas beneath the tunic. For the belt I've chosen scale colours brown leather which has quite a rich warm tone. And for most of the metallic elements I'm using a mix of black and dark sea blue. As well as these circular discs I'm also using this for the braces, helmet and the handle of Mjolnir. Thank you. 
For the strap on the hammer, I'm using the same brown leather tone used for the belt. And for the metal adornment on the belt, I'm using Japanese uniform, darkened with some German camo black brown, although pretty much any dark brown tone would be fine for this. Next I'm painting the hair using English uniform, which I'm desaturating with a little black. I'm applying this somewhat thinly to allow the texture of the hair to show through, and a little flow enhancer can help with this. For the cloak, I'm using scale colours deep red. To speed this up, I'm using a size 3 flat brush for the larger areas. A couple of layers of this will be needed for a flat finish. We're now ready to paint Mjolnir. I'm now going to paint the head of the hammer using Vallejo's turquoise, blue-green and some white. I'm starting with a mix of the turquoise and the blue-green, and I'm going to place this at one end of the flat side of the hammer with the intention of creating a rough gradient across the surface. I'm now going to place some pure blue-green next to it, and some white mixed with blue-green after that. I'm now roughly blending the tones a little, and I'm going to have a bit of a free play creating some noise and texture. You can see I'm breaking things up a bit, because I want to avoid the surface looking too smooth like glass or crystal. We can push the levels up to pure white for the brightest ends of the gradient, as well as most of the edges. I'm now moving on to the neighbouring facets of the hammer, often placing lighter tones on one side against darker tones of those nearby. You can see I'm being quite loose and sketchy in how I approach this, freely trying out different ways of creating pleasing textures, whilst maintaining the overall gradient to keep some sense of structure. I'll often return to areas I've already painted to push things around a bit until I'm happy with how things look, sometimes working with the paint quite wet on the surface of the hammer, other times stippling the paint on to add texture. I've now decided to add some lightning streaks across the surface, initially using pure white. I'm also adding some fainter streaks using a slightly darker tone. Along the way, I'm also sharpening some of the edge highlights. I'm 
I might do a little retouching here later on, but next I'm going to sketch in the main tones for the bass, using Vallejo's Stonewall Grey, mixed with varying amounts of black. I'm doing this now just so I can better judge the overall balance of tones whilst I work on the highlights in a moment. Here I'm just applying some thinned Nuln Oil to bring out some of the texture. Finally, before adding the highlights, I'm going to shade the belt using a 3 to 1 mix of Agrax Earthshade and Druki Eye Violet. This is just a nice easy way to darken down the recesses in the pattern. I'm also using this to tone down the strap on the hammer to match. We're now ready to begin adding the highlights. My plan for highlighting the figure is to roughly work from the top down, gradually decreasing the levels of cold blue light the further down the miniature we go, moving into generally darker and warmer tones towards the lower half. The reason I chose to paint the hammer first was to give me a frame of reference when judging the levels of brightness and saturation for the rest of the model. Notice that the hammer has the greatest saturation of blue, with the levels gradually dropping off the further down we go. I'm going to begin by highlighting the skin, where I'm going to start on the left arm, using the Bugman's Glow and Orange Leather mix we used earlier, and I'll be highlighting up to scale colour's basic flesh. I'll then move on to the face and the right arm, where I'll be introducing varying amounts of white and blue-green, to create the impression of light emanating from the hammer. Before adding any highlights however, I've chosen to first push the depth in the shadows, using a mix of scale colours black and brown leather. You could use any rich dark brown tone you like for this. I'm simply placing this in all of the most shadowed areas, and I'm not concerned with the blending. I'm now adding some of the Buckman's Glow and Orange Leather mix, and using this to create a quick blend up to the base tone in a couple of stages if need be. I'm also darkening the shadow beneath the chin. With that done, we can now start building up the highlights by lightening the Buckman's Glow and Orange Leather mix with some basic flesh, and you could of course use your go-to Caucasian skin tone for this. You can see the area of highlight here shrinking the brighter I go, and I'm practically stippling some of these smaller patches on. This is now pure basic flesh. I'll be returning to add a few final highlights to this arm in a while, but next I'm going to move on to the face and neck area. Here I'm using the same tones as before to brighten up the left side of Thor's face. As we move to the right side of the face, I'm going to introduce a little white and some blue-green to the mid-tones and highlights.
I'm also adding a touch of this cooler tone to the left cheekbone. I'm progressing quite cautiously because it's easier to boost the levels and saturation as needed than it is to reduce them, and I don't want to push things too far until I've got more of the highlights laid out. I'm now moving on to the right arm. At this stage I'm really just getting a feel for the volumes and where I'd like to push the brightness. You can see I'm gradually increasing the levels of white and blue-green in the mix. Here I'm just boosting the levels of orange in some of the shadowed areas to maintain a nice contrast of colour temperature. I'm now really starting to push the levels of blue for the areas that are closest to the hammer. Without the surrounding highlights this blue hand may look a little odd, but we'll be fixing that in a moment. Here I'm just using white mixed with blue-green to pick out the joints of the fingers. To help get a better sense of things I've chosen to throw some light onto the handle of the hammer as well as the braces by simply adding varying amounts of white and blue-green to the original black and dark sea blue base tone. As I'm treating most of these areas as metal, a few fairly sketchy but high contrast highlights should do the trick. I'm also mixing some of the white and blue-green with a little brown to highlight the strap. And again I'm using pure white mixed with a little blue-green for the brightest glints. We can refine things a little later if need be, but this is enough to allow me to get a sense of how the whole area is looking, and I'm now better able to judge how much further I'd like to push the levels of saturation on the arm. I'm now applying just a hint of the cooler skin tone to a couple of the highlights on the left arm too. And here I'm also adding a couple of final highlights to the face. This is now the refining stage and here you can see me redefining some of the shadows. And here I'm toning down the saturation a little on the forearm. There's nothing technically advanced about the way I'm painting here. It's mostly about constantly evaluating how happy we are with the strength, saturation and placement of the highlights, and making adjustments until we're satisfied we've achieved our vision. It would make sense for me now to progress onto the tunic, but first I'm going to paint the legs, simply because I know I'm going to be hitting some of the tunic whilst I do so. I've chosen to paint on a scale like a metal effect to help break up the uniformity of the materials. To do that I'm going to first sketch on some underlying variations of tone and then draw a grid-like pattern on top. So here I'm mixing some black with the graphite and blocking in some loose vertical strips of shadow. 
and might also mix in some deep red for some of the areas at the rear where we might expect some red cast from the nearby cloak. And here I'm mixing some white and some blue-green into the graphite, which I'm using to sketch in a strip of highlight on the more exposed frontal areas. I'm now using some pure black to draw the grid pattern on top. I find thinning with a little flow enhancer mixed into the water really helps when painting fine lines like this. I'm now going to dab some small highlights of varying strength and hue to some of the individual scales. I'm also adding some darker reflections to some of the scales. To maximise the contrast, I've also chosen to mix some ice yellow with some white to provide my brightest glints of light. I'm now moving on to the tunic and boots, both of which I'm treating as a kind of off-black leather. I'm going to start with the tunic, where I'm going to begin by highlighting up to graphene grey, which you can see has a slightly cooler tone compared to the Eclipse grey base tone. I'll then once again be adding varying amounts of white and blue-green to build up the impression of cool light falling from above, just as we did for the skin. As we move further down to the lower part of the tunic and the legs, however, I'm going to gradually introduce more of the warm orange and brown tones, to build up a nice contrast of colour temperature. So here I'm adding my graphene grey to the Eclipse grey base tone and blocking in the main areas of highlight. This is now pure graphene grey. There's something very satisfying about seeing these shapes and volumes gradually take form. I'm now also highlighting the lower part of the tunic. Although there's not yet a huge difference in levels, we can see that the small shift in colour temperature already allows us to nicely define these volumes. I'm now adding increasing amounts of white and blue-green to build up the cooler layers of highlight, especially for the upper chest area. I'm pushing these highlights quite far due to the reflective properties of the leather.
Before going any further, I'm going to paint the metallic discs on the upper chest to help me better judge the balance of tones across the whole area. So I'm once again adding varying amounts of white and a little blue-green to the dark sea blue and black bass tone to place my highlights. I'm now stepping up the brightness. I'm leaving room to add some touches of red later on at the top of the disc which is closest to the cloak. It's a small touch, but here I'm mixing some brown leather into the Eclipse Grey and using this to strengthen the shadow just beneath the disc. I'm now continuing with a few final highlights. And here I'm adding a couple of touches of pure blue-green. I'm highlighting the other disc in the same way. I'm now returning to the tunic where I'm going to be mixing some of the orange and brown leather tones into the highlights for the areas further down the figure. I'm being quite loose and sketchy for the boots in particular to create a more scratchy weathered look. I'm now going to mix some ivory with the orange leather to create quite a bright highlight tone.
We shouldn't be afraid to go quite bright here, provided we keep the highlights tightly focused. You can see I'm playing with pushing the levels of orange in some of these areas. I'm also now bringing some of these orange-brown tones into the shadows of the torso. And here I'm introducing some touches of the blue-green to the boots, which I imagine would still catch some light from the hammer and this also helps to create a more unified look. At this point I'm just freely playing with pushing the tones around to achieve a look I'm happy with. To introduce some glossy depth to the leather, I'm now going to brush some sepia ink into the shadows. You could use any inks you like for this, including the brown and black inks by scale colour. This can be thinned with water for a more gradual build-up of tone, or used neat for the deepest, most defined areas of shadow. I'm now just boosting the levels of orange for the shadows on the torso, a bit like an underlight, to help capture the form and add a little drama. I'm now highlighting the lower metallic discs just as before. I'm also introducing a touch of the orange to the reflections on the metal. Next I'm going to highlight the golden decoration on the belt by highlighting up from the base tone to Japanese uniform, then to ice yellow. I'll also be adding some of the blue-green to the upper reflections. Here I'm adding the ice yellow, along with a hint of the blue-green. I'm also deepening the shadows a little as I go.
This is now ice yellow mixed with a little blue green. For some of the edges however, I'm sticking to a more yellowish tone. Here I'm just introducing a touch of the Japanese uniform and ice yellow to the nearby metalwork. And I'm now highlighting the last two metallic discs on the outfit. For the leather belt itself, I'm going to be freely mixing varying amounts of the brown and orange leather tones with some white and blue green. I'm using the more brownish tones for this area on the left that's turned away from the hammer, but I'll be going fairly blue for some of the raised edges on the other side. I've also decided to deepen the tone in the recesses with a touch of the sepia ink. And I'm now going pretty bright for my final highlights, once again aiming for a slightly rough and scratchy look. I'm now using ivory mixed with a little blue-green for my brightest glints. I'm also hitting a couple of spots on the upper edges of the boots with this. Next I'm moving on to the cloak, where I'm going to highlight up from the deep red to Antares red in a couple of stages. I might sometimes run a damp brush along the border of a transition to help feather out the edge. Notice that I'm not yet highlighting the areas closest to the hammer, as I'll be switching to some cooler tones there in a while. To create a cooler tone for the areas nearer the hammer, we could just add a little white and a touch of the blue-green. I'm just using some scale colour tones, Arctic Blue and Adriatic Blue, to maintain a matte finish. I ended up going back and forth a bit with the intensity and reach of these cooler tones. I'm now using the more orangey Aldebaran red to mainly pick out some of the edges on the cloak.
This can be brightened with a little white. Finally, I've chosen to push the blue a little further for the raised folds on the right shoulder. I'm now highlighting the left bracer exactly as I did the right. And here I'm adding a little red cast. As well as a little brown below. I also want to introduce some red to the discs on the upper chest, and I'm first providing a small undercoat of white. And I'm now applying the red on top. To finish these off, I'm redefining the edges with some of the cold highlight tone. I'm now highlighting the helmet, once again by adding varying amounts of white and blue-green to the dark sea blue and black base tone. I'm also experimenting with a little red cast, as well as the placement of both highlight and shadow. If something doesn't look right, I'll simply paint over it and try something different. Once again using ivory mixed with a little blue-green for my brightest glints. Next I'm adding a few highlights to the hair by mixing some ice yellow with the English uniform along with a little of the blue-green for some of the raised strands nearest to the hammer. And here I'm adding some highlights without the blue-green. I'm now returning to the base, where I'm firstly mixing some brown leather with some black to warm up the tone in the shadows. And I'm now bringing up the value of the upturned surfaces once again with some stonewall grey mixed with a little black. And I'm also introducing a hint of the blue-green for the frontal area. You can see I'm adjusting the hue using thin layers until I'm happy with the overall look. As always, I'm painting the rim of the base in black. 
and I'm now pushing the highlights and definition of the rocks a little further. I'm now providing a light sprinkling of urban scatter over some thinned PVA to add a little texture. And here I've mixed a slightly cool pale tone which I'm using to add some small touches of weathering to the base of the cloak. I'm now making a few final tweaks such as boosting the red cast here at the back of the tunic. And here I'm strengthening the definition of the golden decoration because I've noticed I've missed a couple of important edges. I'm also pushing the blue back a little with some of the Japanese uniform. Here I'm providing a few final highlights elsewhere on the figure. And finally, I've noticed there are some bands around the boots, which I've chosen to paint using the same golden tones used for the symbol on the belt. And this completes Thor. Thank you so much for watching. I very much hope you enjoyed the episode. Please be aware that you can find additional PDF guides for some of the other figures in the game over at sarastro.com. And as always, you'll find details of all the paints and brushes used in the video description below. My deepest thanks go to the kind and wonderful patrons for supporting this work. As always, I couldn't do this without them. Join me again soon as we continue painting miniatures for Marvel Crisis Protocol. Happy painting!